Hi, in this week we will learn about linear filters. There are many transformations that we can apply to an image to find specific features or create different effects. Many of these effects can be modeled with a simple operation. Start by making a new empty image of the same size of the original. Take the values of the pixels surrounding the target location. Apply some weighted sum on those values. Then write out the results in the new target location of the new image. And finally, apply the same operation to each pixel of the original image. In general terms, this procedure is called linear filtering. The pattern of weights of a linear filter is called the kernel and the process of applying this kernel is called convolution. A simple example of a linear filter is a smoothing. In the process of image creation, many reasons can result in image noise. By smoothing the image with the right kernel, we can get rid of some of that noise. When we smooth the image, what we are trying to do is removing drastic changes on the signal. For example, if we plot the values of this line of pixels, we can see that there are some spikes where the bright points are. When we apply the filter, we remove those spikes, making the signal smooth. The simplest way to make a smoothing filter is by using the average. In this example, let's consider a kernel of one pixel around the target. So, it looks like this. In the center we have the target location, and we are considering the 8 pixels around. Now we have to calculate the average of all the pixels in the kernel, and write it down in the target location of the new image. We convolve the kernel across all the pixels in the image, and our smooth image is ready. By averaging the values in a small neighborhood, any pixel that is significantly different will be dragged back to the mean value of its neighbors. If we make the kernel larger, then we will take into account pixels that are farther away, making the image blurry. However, the blurring that we can obtain by averaging pixels on the kernel is different from the blurring that we can have from a camera. We want a blurring process that converts a small bright dot into a circularly symmetric region of blur. Brighter at the center than the edges and fading slowly to darkness. A good formal model to achieve this effect is the symmetric Gaussian kernel. The name comes from the fact that this kernel has the form of the probability density for a two-dimensional normal or also called the Gaussian distribution. This kernel forms a weighted average that weights pixels at its center much more strongly than the pixel at the boundaries. The standard distribution of the Gaussian, or sigma, defines the shape of the bell. The choice of the sigma for the kernel depends on the application. If the sigma of the Gaussian is really small, let's say is smaller than one pixel, then the filter will have a minimal effect because the weight of the neighbors is really small. A sigma slightly larger than one pixel can effectively clean some noise while conserving the structure of the image. Larger values will result in different levels of blur. If the sigma is too large, then the filter will be similar to the average kernel because all the pixels will be weighted equally. We can use any type of shape and weights in the kernel to achieve an effect. For example, we already talked about the average and the Gaussian kernels. These two can be used as low-pass filters to remove noise or to create a blurry image. But we can also create a kernel that makes the opposite. If we change the weights of the neighbor pixels, instead of smoothing the image, we will make it sharper. This kernel is accentuating the differences in the image. Another common example is the Sobel operator. This kernel is positive in one side and negative in the other, using similar weights. 
This means that in a patch with constant values, the result will be zero. However, when we find a drastic change, then the result will be one. For this reason, the subtle kernel is used as an edge detector. This specific kernel is looking at vertical edges, but we can run another convolution using the horizontal version, then the result will be more accurate. You can see the kernel as a template that is looking in the image for a specific pattern, so we can use that in our advantage depending on the application. Now, there is a common problem when we apply convolution to an image. In the edges, we have no data available to fill up the kernel. So there are several approaches to deal with this problem. The first one is to ignore the pixels that will result in an error. This can have an impact after several convolutions because the final image will be significantly smaller than the original. Another approach is to pad the image with constant values. So we can add zeros or ones in the edge just to be able to perform the convolution. However, this has the disadvantage of creating a gradient in the edge. Finally, we can pad the image in another way. You can, for example, repeat the values in the edge or apply a different function on those values. In this way, we don't shrink the image and also we don't introduce any weird effect in the edges. Okay, in this video, we talk about linear filters. We define convolution and different type of kernels and that we can change the shape of a kernel to obtain different results. See you in the next video.